Welcome back to the third episode of my Captaining Guide series, where I will teach you everything you need to know to become a great team captain. Be sure to check out the playlist for the full guide, and tune in to twitch.tv slash kale to watch me live every Wednesday to tell your story or ask me questions. With that being said, today's episode will be focusing on how to create your team post, how to handle interviews with applicants, and how to conduct tryouts. Here's a reminder that the PowerPoint is available to download in the description below. There is a lot to cover, so let's get started. The first step to starting your team is to recruit members. So first, list out your requirements. Be as specific as possible to simplify the process and minimize excessive DMing. Requirements, I think, are the most efficient to list are age range, desired weapon role or class, time zone and region preference, language fluency, number of expected practice days, calm capabilities, and personalized requirements like LGBTQ friendly, prior comp experience, and minimal cursing. You may want to consider making your age range more specific rather than just 16 plus or 18 plus. For the sake of scheduling, it's more convenient to align the routine of similar groups. A team of college students would be hindered by a high school student with a curfew. Or, a more extreme example I've seen, if the team is more mature with members who are married and have kids, it's unlikely a teammate who just turned 18 will be able to relate. As much as we were memed a bit for not wanting the unemployed, the main reason for this requirement was because the three of us were either working or enrolled in college. If our fourth had neither commitment, they may feel disappointed by our lack of solo queue and additional practice that they have access to or even restricted by our team's time of practice that is catered to everyone's schedules. I think it's also important to note that we announced there would be no exceptions made for any requirement listed in the graphic. One that people would often try to convince me out of was being in NA. The main issue with this is the incompatibilities in time because the majority of the team are all in NA with fairly similar schedules. Often, we hold our events spontaneously when everyone happens to be around. Additionally, scheduled events will usually take much longer than anticipated. It would not be fair to the one person who wouldn't be able to make it to the full practice and hangout times. On top of that, they would also be inconvenienced in having to endure waking up or staying up through ungodly hours just for tournaments and scrims with our usual partners. We once had a teammate in Asia, and the tensions that sprang from their inability to practice and falling behind mechanically have taught us to not make the same mistake again. Unless the player is highly dedicated and committed to adjusting their schedule to another region, it is a rare case that it would work out. People will undoubtedly judge your post by its cover. Put effort into making your recruitment post look nice because it is what attracts people right away. A block of only text is simply boring to read and shows no personality. One of the questions I asked during the interview process for applicants to my team was what attracted you to our post? A majority of them said along the lines of, I like the way it looked. It showed you are more serious and professional. And considering I got 31 applicants in my DMs within two weeks, I'd say the impact of visuals is pretty significant as many of these people were unaware of who I was as a content creator. The secret to creating a nice graphic is Canva. Search for recruitment and you'll be given a bunch of hiring poster templates that you can filter to only show free ones. This is a good option if you want to try your hand at some graphic design. Get inspiration from the templates and the posts of other teams. What do you like or dislike about them? Personalize the post to highlight specific aspects you find important. Emphasizing your desired age range and weapon pool is a good way for people to gain interest or continue scrolling quickly and efficiently. Save yourself and others time. Alternatively, if you have difficulty with a graphic, a text post can also be done with some personalization. Utilize Discord's markdown capabilities. Text formatting such as italics, bold, underline, bullet points, and headers make your post easy to read. Then, use emotes to add color and show your team's theme if you have one. Once your post is done, share it on as many servers as possible and Twitter. You never know who will see it. Locate the team recruitment or team post channel to send it in. Also, an additional tip, 
try to send it in the mornings on weekdays, before noon of your local time for the highest engagement. Here are the servers I like to post in. I'll leave the links to all of them in the description. Now for the interview process. When someone reaches out, immediately ask for their FA post if they don't send it on their own right away. If they don't have one, refer them to Cactus's video on how to create one. I've put the timestamp for post creation above. You can also browse the FA post channels of the Discord servers you posted in to find a player yourself. Once you find someone who passes your requirements and piques your interest, check their Discord profile. Sometimes, you can get an understanding of someone with just their profile picture, status, connections, and mutual servers. Their PFP and banner, if they have one, will often show their interest in some way. Art style, favorite character, colors, and even sense of humor. If their status reflects what they are currently doing or feeling, this likely shows that they don't mind being open with what happens in their life. Quotes, song lyrics, and silly statements are also a way to gauge their overall vibe. Even correct grammar and word choice can reflect maturity. See what info you can gather from their YouTube, Twitch, Twitter, and Instagram accounts if they are connected. How they interact on their socials can reveal their personality and any red flags like conflicting interests and beliefs. And finally, Mutual Servers is an excellent way to see where they saw your post and how well informed they are about comp. If someone only has one Splatoon server shared with you, specifically IPL or Squid School, it's safe to assume that they are very new. If they are in the tournament servers, they may have participated in them and you can ask about their experience. It may seem excessive, but these extra background checks will save you time and the stress of tryouts. For me, one of my requirements was to be PG-13, and as a streamer, I am particularly strict about protecting my reputation. Foul language spotted in a person's status and 18 plus content on Twitch would not be tolerated. Since my team is already established, I also don't bother sharing every applicant with my team. They don't need to worry about ones that don't pass my standards. Out of 31 applicants, only 8 were allowed to try out. Once they pass the background check, ask more questions to get a feel for their mannerism and personality. Here are some that I like to use. If they have more than three weapons listed in their FA post, ask, out of your weapon pool, which are you most proficient in? And if they have listed tourney experience, what teams did you play for and why did you leave? You can do additional background checks by searching for the team on Twitter. If they have one, you can examine their tendencies. Are they established or often recruiting and lack results? This will help you see if their experience was really complete and if they know what to expect in comp versus a struggling one that may be brand new. What made you get into competitive? Are you currently applying to other teams? If they respond with something along the lines of applying to any team they can, they likely don't fully understand the commitment in comp and just want the experience without being picky about where they end up. Sometimes they don't even read the post fully. What attracted you to my post? This will reveal what caught their eye, what is most important to them. And lastly, what else can you tell me about your personality? Do you play games outside of Splat? Hobbies, etc.? As you ask these questions, notice if they try to converse or give direct, blunt answers. Are they treating the conversation as a serious interview, or chat like they're talking to a friend? Do they make assumptions like, when you are my captain, or ask, when will I get a tryout, even before you finish asking questions? Decide how you want these prospective tryouts to treat you. Do you give chances to those who engage in lively conversation but may lack the skills you're looking for? What about someone who talks to you respectfully, even if they lack personality, usually due to a shy nature? It's up to you to determine what level of professionalism you want, but make sure you are still in charge. For example, if you hold a group tryout, those with strong personalities may quickly overpower the quiet ones or even belittle your position as captain by immediately acting like your friend or even downplaying you at the start, which has happened to me once before where a tryout challenged our team's comp and argued I couldn't paint, which is entirely untrue, causing the others to lose confidence and likely get uncomfortable. 
If someone shows potential, it's worth holding multiple trial periods to give shy personalities a chance to find their voice and reveal more about themselves once they are more comfortable. After passing the interview phase, it's time for tryouts. The first tryout is the vibe check. For two to three applicants, play opens and try asking more casual questions about themselves. Do they ask your questions back to you? Do they play random weapons rather than their competitive main during the tryout? These first impressions usually try to show that they are skilled and able to play other weapons, sometimes adapting to you and the current map mode. Just make sure you watch how they do with their listed competitive main. If you see they perform better with another weapon, you can ask why they don't apply for teams with that one instead. And finally, the most important thing is that you enjoy their company. Don't accept someone purely for doing well mechanically. Chemistry has to be there to do well in a tourney setting. Once they pass the vibe check, play opens more seriously and use basic callouts. You can go further and try sendo cue, as those tend to be quite stressful and can bring out potential tilt. If you don't know what sendo cue is, I've linked Chara's video explaining it above. Once you're feeling confident, you can bring the tryout into a tournament to experience the real thing. Tournaments are long and tiring and can bring out the worst in people. For completely new comp players, the experience may be too exhausting and deter them. Tryouts can take up to a month per person to determine if they're a good fit. Don't be hasty and be patient. You may need to go through up to four tournaments to discover how they tilt and if it's something you can work out. If you're not yet four to participate in scrims and tourneys, take the time between tryouts to play and hang out often with the players you are certain about. Take your time to build your team right with a strong friendship. Hold team bonding sessions playing games outside of Splatoon, having watch parties, and even doing homework together. One of my favorites, to act as accountability partners and ultimately being productive side by side. You'll spend up to five hours together on tourney day, so you'll need to enjoy being in their company. Be sure to stick around for the next video where I will be explaining meta and its place in low level with the help of many experienced comp players. This will also help you explore your options on what specific weapons or roles you'll want to add to your recruitment post. That's all I have for today. I know it's a lot, but I hope this helps in getting you on the right track to a strong foundation for your team. As always, be sure to like and subscribe, and I'll see you again soon.